All right, my friends, welcome to Trending. Today is Thursday, October 6th. It's about 9.23 in the morning. One of our Another one of our uh, at-home editions of Trending as the church office is still under construction. So, Joe, you're in East Wichita. I'm in West Wichita. So, greetings from the other side of the town here. Greetings. I'm getting a little bit of the sunlight before you get it. That's all. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Thanks for hopping on Zoom this morning, Joe. We got uh, we usually try to do five topics today. There wasn't a whole lot of stuff I wanted to. I thought we could talk about, so we just got four today. We'll kind of keep it maybe a little bit quicker than usual. So we'll just get right to it. As always, we try to put a faith spin on whatever's going on in the news today. So uh, let's start off, Joe. So we were chatting a little bit before we started recording, and the first thing I'm going to toss at you, I think we actually talked about exactly one year ago today, um, but apparently my memory is not very good because I don't remember very many details. Right. So I'm going to let your uh, very smart brain do the work that my very dumb brain doesn't remember. And this week has been Yom Kippur, the holiday. Yeah. And yeah. We- what someone could do is they could kind of retrieve the episode from last year and play it side by side, see if anything's changed or maybe <laughs> our comments on it have changed. But yeah, Yom Kippur is a Jewish holiday. It's one of the big ones. And um, I guess the more... I guess the English transliteration would be like the Day of Atonement. Um, Yom is uh, the Hebrew word for day or a period of time. So when God creates on days, this is where like, this is where like um, ordination, oral exams can kind of get a little, a little tense because they say, well, are you young earth or old earth? Well, it depends how you... (laughs) interpret the word yom in the hebrew all that aside so in the heart of the book of leviticus which the first word of the hebrew text is vaikra of leviticus by the way i don't know why like i'm like bringing out the hebrew today i don't know this much and that's all so. but right in the heart of leviticus which has more per capita direct quotations from god than any other book in the bible by the way so the next time we complain about leviticus in our bible and three years reading plan just remember god speaking a lot in the book of Leviticus, but in the middle, there is this, um, there's this great festival where this it's a public day of repentance. Uh, you might know it better for the two goats. So they have a couple of goats in the middle of the ceremony. One is used as an offering meal with God in cover, and the other one, um, the sins of Israel are heaped upon it uh, ceremoniously, uh, ceremonially, I guess, by the the priesthood, and then it's carried away to the Valley of Azazel, where they, at that time, supposed evil came from. And so this goat is uh, carried there in the sins of Israel with it. And so it's got this neat little um, paradox of like a hidden dealing with God and a corporate dealing with God. And so typically on the day of Yom Kippur, it's a day of lowliness and fasting. In fact, I think Tony Kornheiser at the end of, uh, pardon the interruption earlier this week, said, may your fast be easy as kind of a a benediction, uh, good words that they say to one another in uh, the Jewish community. And so, yeah, it's just a day to like sort themselves out. And uh, this has had a profound effect on people. I remember there was a book uh, once written by an atheist who talked about how there are certain parts of religion that are good for the wider world. And one of the things that this writer mentioned was um, how like this public confession or this public, uh, all of us on one same page on a day, like we're all going to deal with some of the issues and, and things in our life. And so that's what Yom Kippur is. And so that's what's going on this week uh, with, with our Jewish friends. And so uh, may their fast be easy this week, I guess. So, yeah. yeah. And Joe, over the, I guess it's been a little over a year since we've started trending. And one thing that kind of keeps coming up is uh, both the Jewish faith and like the Catholic faith have a lot of these holidays, right? Where there's like a very specific either person, like a saint or somebody that they're remembering or some kind of thing like this taken from the Old Testament or wherever. Yeah. And again, we've hit on this a little bit, so we don't need to go, we don't need to rehash it too much. But like, I kind of like that. I kind of like that both of those faiths have these days built in their calendars that are really intentional to remind their people of something important in their faith. And, you know, us on the Protestant evangelical side, we've got, I mean, Christmas and Easter, but that's about it. Hmm. Why, why do you think that is like, well, how come those days are seem to be pretty prevalent in, in Judaism and in the Catholicism, but we don't, we haven't really embraced that. Do you have any thoughts on that? It's great. I mean, I think the, the, the Protestant gravity for the, the Reformation was to take um, 
the development of our own faith out of the hands of the magisterium and to work on it ourselves. I mean, the Bible was written in common language. Um, worship was in smaller and smaller communities. And um, there's a sense of, and a, it, this is a good development, but um, kind of leaning on First Peter 2, 9, 8, 9, where all of us are the priesthood of believers. All of us can come before God on our own. We don't need an intermediary. Therefore, we don't need the big structure anymore. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes um, you could throw the baby out with bathwater on these things. There is actually something about doing something together, either in a larger community than just our church community, or even like a worldwide Christianity. Uh, that I think is, it's uh, kind of awe-inspiring. So one of the things that happens daily through a lot of parts of the church is this idea of fixed uh, hour prayer. Early Christians used to pray, you know, five to seven times a day on certain days and times, or sorry, certain hours of the day. And if you think about time zones, like the Eastern time zone did the prayer an hour ago. Now we get to do it. We pass it on the mountain time zone. So there's a sense where in a daily, in a daily format, the church is all together. And so I think sometimes we miss out on stuff because we want to be so independent in every area of our life, including our faith. But uh, Christianity is a corporate faith. And so I think that's why when we get into these times and seasons, why things seem so uh, vague or otherworldly to us, because we've been oriented in a, in a very kind of private and personal faith instead of like this corporate aspect of the Christian faith. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And I think it's also one of those things where I think we can all learn from each other, right? I think there is a benefit that Protestants can learn from Judaism and Catholicism and maybe, you know, vice versa, the, some things that we do well, maybe they can learn from. And so I think we can all learn from each other, right? Yep. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Well, moving along, the the big story today is some really horrible news coming out of Thailand. I just read a couple articles this morning. There's a mass shooting, 35 people dead at least, maybe a few more. Um, apparently, the shooter was on drugs at the time. Um, I did a little bit of research. I'm just reading, and you know, mass shootings are very rare in Thailand. They don't happen very often, so it's probably even more heartbreaking over there. Very sadly, we're kind of used to them, which is horrible in its own right. But since it's so rare, I'm sure our friends in Thailand are hurting. Our friend Andy is over there right now with his wife, Carmen and JJ. So I'm sure they're, you know, hearing all these news and dealing with that. So mm-hmm. obviously, mass shootings are always just horrible to hear about. Um, very, very sad. What, what's what's on your mind today as you're hearing about Thailand, Joe? Yeah, I mean, it was a surprising thing. So I heard it this morning on one of the news pods that I uh, listened to. And um, although they don't happen very often, um, I, I, I could be corrected here. I could be fact-checked, but I think that there are like some pretty lax gun laws uh, in Thailand, like kind of like uncharacteristic of that part of the world. So mm-hmm. whatever, but it is, so it is um, striking that they don't have these as, as much as other parts of the world. They did reference another one uh, that happened, oh, within the recent months or whatever. And so maybe this is something uh, a bit more common uh, than we would think since we're not up on the the Thai news, but it's devastating, man. And uh, you just kind of, you can't, every time one of these things happen, you just kind of go into like, what causes a person to say, okay, I've thought about it long enough. I'm going to go ahead and go through with this. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's obviously something that is, um, an evergreen issue in our culture. And so something that we need to keep on working on together, uh, both um, communities and consumers and uh, legislators think about how can we make our world safer uh, with all these issues that seem to be popping up all the time. So, yeah. Yeah, man. And several of these uh, victims were kids at a daycare center. So it just makes your heart even just more heavy for just horrible, horrible news. So yeah. Yeah, our hearts are heavy for Thailand today. I'm sure more news will continue to come out, so we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah. Okay. Well, in probably the uh, the harshest of transitions here, very very direct left turn here. Okay. I'm going to do something a little bit different, Joe. There's oh, a lot of superhero news in the news. Okay. So okay. I'm just going to blitz through some headlines, and you can comment on them if you want, or we can just move on. But okay. All right. I'm, I'm very active in the superhero world. There were several things trending on Google and Twitter today, so I'm going to wrap them all up together. Here we go. Okay. Ready? This yep. is the latest DC and MCU big shakeups. Oh, man. Okay. Charlie Cox is back as Matt Murdock slash Daredevil. He made an appearance in the most recent episode of She-Hulk. Okay. Henry Cavill is going to be back as Superman in the new Black Adam movie. 
Okay. Hugh Jackman is going to be back as Wolverine in the new Deadpool movie. But there's also rumors that Zach Zach Efron might take over as the new uh, Wolverine in some kind of multiverse situation. So we might have Hugh Jackman and Zach Efron playing Wolverine. And they released a trailer for the new Black Panther movie this week. There's a lot going on in superhero world. So I just wanted to drop all those headlines. If you're interested, you can you, you can read and watch YouTube videos to your heart's content. Um, we've talked about this, Joe. I'm a huge Marvel guy. I love Marvel. Right. Endgame was the best. The Spider-Man movie was incredible. But I feel like they've all just not been very good lately. So my 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 love is, is uh, dwindling a little bit. But it's still kind of fun to see all these big... A lot of big news happening in the superhero world this week. So do you care about any of this? I mean, I do kind of add, oh, so here we go. Like nerd out a little bit, but like from a, like a philosophical level, I think, I mean, I enjoy the movies. My kids and I watch them. We're entertained. It's a great time. But I was listening to some uh, culture critics about why, why is there like really nothing new out there? Stuff just kind of recapitulated. And it seems to be because of the whole like IP dilemma. Um, you can only spend so much money on making a movie, paying everybody, and then getting the movie out there to try to win some of that money back that you that you spent, right? Yep. And you don't have to spend time explaining who Spider Man is. Like the 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 narrative is common, and so the reason that these movies um, are made again and again, and the continual grooming of these two um, superhero universes, is because you you have a better chance of making money on the back end because you don't have to spend so much time developing the story uh mm-hmm. people bring themselves to it uh, you don't have to hunt them down to you know check it out like people are here for it right and so i think that that's uh it's just kind of revealing about how people are reluctant to take chances because um things are quite costly and it's just easier to bring people on board with stuff that we already know mm-hmm. uh, but i think about like all these superhero things coming out and I think one of the things that I admire about the MCU in particular is um, that is a world where superheroes have been around and people are into it. Like they're, the, the general population in those movies, like they're just aware that extraordinary beings are around them. Um, mm-hmm. And because of that, it seems to be a less skeptical society <laughs> than maybe that we have. So it's kind of refreshing uh, that people are open to the idea of the extraordinary mm-hmm. where in our world and day and time, uh, we have just been trained because of all the deep fakes and all the stuff out there that we have to doubt first and believe second. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that um, what I like maybe the background of the, of the superhero stuff is that it does create a world where there is fascination mm-hmm. and um, there are people who are open to the wonder of it yeah. all. Um, mm-hmm. There was a, a philosopher named Adam Kotzko, he wrote a series of books. And the first one, he had just finished his PhD. Uh, he just finished his paper, his dissertation. So he had some, he was watching TV and he wrote a series of three books. The first one is called Why We Love Sociopaths. Like, why do we love these characters like Jason Bourne and others mm-hmm. who kind of like can buck social mores and do whatever they want? It's mm-hmm. because we can't do it ourselves. Like we, we would yeah. like to like tell somebody off, but we don't, right. Because of all yeah. the consequences that could be. And so we tend to like, um, we, we tend to have such a fascination for people who can achieve great things because we would love to do it ourselves. And I think deep down, we just know we can't. And so I think that's going on in the background of these uh, superhero movies philosophically is that these folks, they're kind of living at least at a small measure uh, the mm-hmm. dreams that we have uh, that we wish we could do for our own life. So anyways, that's, those are yeah. a couple of things that come up when I think of these things. That's good. Cause we all want to be heroes, right? Like we know we don't have powers, but we all want to do something extraordinary with our lives. So I think there's all that, true. that seed inside of all of us too. So, yeah, that's true. All right. Well, lots of fun uh, things coming down the horizon in superhero land. So yeah. Thanks for your perspective there, Joe. Yeah. Okay. Last one on the list today. So our friend, Tom Brady, so I guess real quick, Joe, I, you're, are you at, do you love hate Brady? Hate Brady. Are you in the middle? Like people have hard, really hard feelings about Tom Brady. They really do. So like, there's certain things about him that I don't care about. I mean, he went to Michigan. I'm also a Ohio state fan. So that's strike one. Um, I don't like how he barks at people on the sideline. I think that's tacky. I think some people say, no, he's just being like 
a competitive guy. Yeah, but you can like, I don't know, take a lap, buddy, and calm that down a little bit. But uh, no one, but you can't deny that the guy wins. Uh, He changed the game of football for sure. And I just go back to like back during the NFL combine when they used to like, I don't know, measure these guys' body fat percentage with cameras rolling. I mean, he looks like a tennis player. (laughs) No offense, tennis players, but he's playing the most violent sport (laughs) in the world. And yes, he's, he's played it for a long time and he's held up. So, yes. I mean, at least he's a physical specimen at some level that we can't see with the naked, untrained eye. I mean, I, so I don't know how he's been able to manage. So all that to say, like, at the end of the day, you got to give props to Brady. If you don't, like, if you absolutely refuse to say, I hate him, but I can understand why people admire him, then I think you're just a hater. Like, I don't know. You know yeah. So anyways, like, why not have a balanced opinion about this guy? So. Right. That's kind of where I am. I don't, I don't love him, but you, like you said, you can't argue. He is incredibly talented. Yep. So he's in the news this week. I'm sure you've heard Joe. So there's all these rumors. I, I don't, I don't like really going down the rumor well, rumor mill, you know, but yeah. he and Giselle, his wife are apparently having some marital issues. There's apparently some divorce lawyers in talks. Mm-hmm. Apparently she was uh, photographed without her ring on this week. And so there's just kind of, it, it it's kind of blowing up in the, TMZ rumor world what's going on with Tom and Giselle which again that's comp that happens all the time whenever there's celebrities like that but Joe so this it's just I think it is an interesting story because Brady obviously last year he retired and then he came back this whole Giselle thing has kind of been in the background a little bit people were kind of wondering if they were doing okay or maybe not so now it's kind of blowing up maybe they're not doing so well Brady's not playing super well this year and so there's kind of some of this should he retire should he have come back or was it maybe better for him to stay home? So here's what I was thinking this morning, this morning, Joe, like, can you imagine, like, again, I don't want to, we're not, I don't want to add to the rumors, but let's say if, if everything's true and he and Giselle are having some marital issues, can you imagine if Brady did not play this Sunday to spend time with his wife? Like, can you imagine a world where probably one of the best athletes to ever live took a week off in a season where there's only 17 games right to spend time with his wife like i think some people would be super crazy supportive of that some people would not be able to even comprehend a world where someone would elevate their spouse above their career like that but do you think that could ever happen and do you think sometimes is that necessary like do we even if it seems crazy if we want to have a good marriage sometimes we need to put our career aside right like yeah. when you hear what what goes through your mind with all this tom and giselle drama and can you imagine a world where tom might put his marriage ahead of his career well maybe not during season like i think because there's only 17 games um because it seems like everything really depends on him in tampa bay um, and I don't know if football's got the culture to, uh, to for personal reasons or load management, kind of like the NBA does or MLB. Um, you know, there's, people take leaves of absence all the time, like paternity leave when they have a kiddo during season. But to say, hey, we need to I don't know, go on go on a long walk on a Sunday morning, and we can't fit it in any other time but Sunday afternoon, <laughs> like whenever. Right. I just think people say, yo, you could like you could be put on the injury list of having like rib pain and take a day off, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and that guy doesn't do OTAs and doesn't do a lot of preseason stuff because of his AJ is kind of exempt of him of all that. So I can't see a world like that. I do worry about me. Cause like, I don't know why he came back. Um, it's not as good a situation as it was last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and he did say he wanted to spend more time with his family. <laughs> That's why he was retired. <laughs> and then that he's anyways so i don't know it seems like no matter how experienced you are you can still make some uh some bad decisions and it yeah. seems like this might have been a bad decision for mr thomas brady and i think about that like i i really love watching football like i really enjoy it and i think obviously there's a lot of americans who do and there it's rare but there are occasions when like someone's brother will pass away or something like that and a player takes a day off because he just you know he's going through family stuff so that's rare but it does happen sometimes but then i've also watched a few games where there's a player his wife is literally in labor and he's on the field right yeah and then there's things like this with brady and so i, I think it is interesting like i put i wonder what i would do you know what i mean if i was tom brady what would i do in this situation 
And I just like, I want to be the kind of person who elevates my family above my career. You know, even if there's only 17 games, I want to be that kind of person, but I just can't. I mean, obviously Brady's world looks so much different than ours. And like you said, he's got during the week, even though he should be studying film and whatever, his schedule should allow for a lot more free time other than Sunday afternoons. But it does seem like a lot of these guys just put their entire lives on hold just to excel in this game. And I just, that can't, obviously it's clearly not healthy for their relationships. So yeah, it's a messy situation. Troy Aikman said, and I forget the exact age he said, but he's like, imagine retiring at the age of like 35. Mm -hmm. from the thing you love the most you worked your whole life to get to and then be done at 35 like there is probably an emotional setback uh probably an ontological setback of who am i like who is you know tom brady now that he doesn't have football um but you know like they do get to retire early but then like maybe they delay a lot of the stuff and say once i'm done then we'll get back to or get to like some more of the family stuff but um i think you put your family on pause quite a bit Mm-hmm. And, um, oh, there's like this neat little, uh, at the very end. So I'll probably this spoiler alert, but like the Friday night lights TV series mm-hmm. where at the end, um, it's neat. Like the, the spouse of uh, coach Taylor, like she actually catches a break of a job that she'd rather have. And he's offered like the dream job and, um, man, I, I hope I'm not spoiling it, but anyways, she kind of wins out and he takes a back seat and it is, it is like a praiseworthy thing that he does. And, and I think that someone needs to be coaching these guys um, towards their end. So that it's a bit of a, more of a graceful end. Yeah. Not such a um, kind of a, a very abrupt ending because I, there's just a psychological tsunami waiting for them. I mean, you see, like in a guy like Brett Favre, you see the stuff that he's dealing with right now. I mean, that's yeah. probably a whole different thing. But like that guy struggled with with quitting and let, and letting right. go. Mm-hmm. Like, why is it there's somebody like feeding him quarter pounders all day and like giving him speaking gigs and like getting him out of shape as quickly as possible so that yeah. when like OTAs come around, like they don't have any idea of wanting to go back, you know? Right. <laughs> because it is time to move on. And so, um, I, I, I. I I have no idea what they go through, but I can just imagine a psychological tsunami waiting for you when it's over. And if you don't have somebody sorting that out with you, like it would be probably pretty heavy and challenging to deal with it all. So, and we've talked several times, Joe, that, I mean, we're just human beings just aren't built for this level of fame, right? Like, I think on some level, people like us, like normal people, we look up at Tom Brady and with amounts of money, we can't even comprehend Um, fame that we can't comprehend just everything. His life just is so drastically different than ours. Most of us on some level kind of aspire to that. If we're on it, like that looks like such an appealing life, but there's just obviously such a huge cost. Right. So maybe he does have all those things, but if your marriage and family are down the tubes, it's not worth it. Right. So I think that's one of those themes that we continue to, when we look at headlines, fame just is, doesn't match up to the promises that it, aims to deliver right so i think that's just a lesson that we keep learning the more we talk about celebrity news yeah yeah man that's a good point yeah absolutely all right man well we hit kind of a little bit everything today but uh, thanks, did. thanks for your insight joe thanks to all of you watching listening wherever you are today i'm grateful for you um we're starting up a new sermon series at rich point this week i think a lot of us are looking forward to so hope you can join us on sunday building is still very much under construction but lots of exciting things happening so Anything else to, to close out with today, Joe? You know, I'm not exactly sure. Like the weather is going to be cooler this weekend. So it's going to feel like fall. So whatever you're into for the fall, you got to do it on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> because those are the days for it, man. Yeah, I looked at there's a couple like kind of cooler days, but then there's still some 80 days coming up. I'm just, man, I am ready for fall to really set in. So hopefully we're not too far away from that. I mean, people need to like do like the best day ever twice in a row on Saturday and Sunday. So like pumpkin patch, outdoor fire, pumpkin spice latte, like all the things. Yes. Uh, Rake the leaves, jump in them like with your flannel on, do the flannel family picture before it gets hot again. Like just got to cram it all in there. Take advantage of it when you can. Yep, that's right. (laughs) All right, guys. Well, thanks again for watching. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll hope to see you Sunday and back here next week. Thanks for watching.